Hi everyone, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Photography and Michelle Kane Actions. Today's video tutorial will cover how to effectively remove stretch marks from maternity images to create clean, smooth looking skin for those pregnant bellies. Now this is pretty common with uh, maternity pictures. They want to show off their beautiful bellies and unfortunately there's usually some amount of uh, stretch marks or uh, unsightly things on the skin that we just want to kind of eliminate or lessen and smooth out those areas. So first things first, what we're going to do is start with the background layer and I always, no matter what I'm doing, work on a duplicated background layer. I hardly will do anything on the actual background layer. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take this background layer in the layers palette and drag it down to the new layer icon and drop it and we get a new background copy. And what we're going to start with is actually going to be the patch tool. Now in CS5 I do actually have to say that I love the spot hailing brush tool with the content aware. That new feature has been pretty amazing and it will work great if you're working on images like this where you need to remove um, you know stretch marks and spots and scars and things like that. However, because not everybody is in CS5 and doesn't have content to wear, I wanted to show how to remove these stretch marks and spots with uh, tools other than um, the spot healing brush tool without the content to wear. The spot healing brush tool on its own without this content to wear feature definitely doesn't do um, the, the picture justice. It just doesn't do and create the effects that we want to create. Um, and so we're going to actually be using the healing tool, or I'm sorry, the patch tool and the clone stamp tool today. So right here on this background copy, I'm going to name this one patch tool. So I'm going to do this in two separate layers, the patch tool on one layer and the clone stamping on another. The patch tool will be effective for removing the bigger spots, the bigger lines, um, these purple areas in the skin, uh, and the clone stamp tool is going to be there at a low opacity to kind of blend out the skin make it look a little bit smoother and creamier so we'll do them on two separate layers starting with the patch tool so to get the patch tool we can go over to the toolbar here and in the toolbar we're just going to select the patch tool which is J and you might have to cycle through uh, the J key with the shift key there to get to that if you're going to use your keyboard shortcuts but the healing brush tool, the patch tool, the spot healing all in here. So here's our patch tool. And basically what we're going to be doing is working kind of in smaller sections and then bigger sections. So where I see these bigger darker lines, I'm just going to with my mouse drag a marquee line around that. It'll make a selection and then basically with that selection made you just drag it over to some clean skin. Now of course you wouldn't want to drag it up to something that didn't match the area that you were trying to clone it to or, or patch it to but we're going to drag it up to some other skin and it's going to just kind of remove some of those darker purple areas. So I'm just basically clicking, dragging and dropping, clicking, dragging and dropping in order to get some of these darker, more profound areas cleaned up. So it won't look perfect and it won't look, um, you know, exactly where you're going to want it to look in the end by doing this piece by piece, but we're getting the basics there. We're getting a lot of these um, real dark purplish areas out of there. And then we can again, like I said, go in with the clone stamp tool in just a little bit with those low opacities and be able to smooth things out, make it look a little bit more seamless. So as we go through here, get some of these little dots out of here. And the patch tool does a really nice job of matching things up as long as you kind of um, are dragging it to an area that sort of matches in uh, brightness and in color, it does a good job. So once we have a lot of those circles and spots uh, out of the way, we can begin to clean it up just a little bit more with the clone stamp tool. So. I'm left here with the selection. I'm just going to hit Command or Control D to deselect that. So what we have here, if we click the eyeball off on this patch tool layer, is we go from that to this. 
Now, of course, again, you can see how the skin doesn't exactly match with the darkness and whatnot, but we're going to kind of clean that up and make it a little bit more seamless. So with this patch tool layer, I'm going to duplicate it. This time I'm just going to hit Command J or Control J on a PC and double click the name to call this a clone tool. So on this layer, I need to go up and get my clone stamp tool, which is S for your keyboard shortcut. And we'll pick that. And then the opacity is the main thing. The opacity and the mode. Right here I've got the mode, the blending mode, to darken, which we definitely don't want. Um, we want to go ahead and take it up to normal. And the opacity are usually what between 10 and 50 percent, somewhere in that range, and I'll change the opacities all the time. And the way I do it is just hitting a number on my keyboard. So if I wanted 30 percent, I'd hit the 3 key, or 20 percent the 2 key, or 100 percent the 0 key. So uh, to begin with, we're just going to go on the slider here, and we're going to pick about 20 percent opacity brush. My flow is always at 100. I never really change that in any tool that I work with. Um, it's always the opacity. So using the uh, bracket keys, I'm just going to increase and decrease the size of my brush there. And basically we're just looking to smooth things out. So low opacities, I'm going to option or alt click on some skin that I'm sampling from and then drop it down lightly. I'm going to undo that. Uh, Command or Control Z will undo and drop my brush opacity down to 10. So I'm going to actually just hit the one key on the keyboard to do that. As I just saw, it was a little too intense right at first. So again, option clicking to sample some clean skin and dropping it on some other uh, skin that we want to clone it down on. So basically, just looking to smooth things out, I'm constantly resampling. Every time you see that little icon right there pop up, that little target icon, it's just I'm sampling from this area and dragging it to a different area and dropping it with my mouse. So even some of these spots that I didn't get over here, I can come back with and just clone stamp that out. Now we are a little get, bit lighter. Things are getting brighter over here and not having so much shadow, but we can always remedy that with just a little curves and masking in some darkness if we need to. Um, you know, it's not really a big deal. Our main concern, honestly, is just to get those spots out of there. And it doesn't always have to be 100% perfect where every ounce of every spot is taken out of the picture because, you know, skin has texture, skin has spots and um, bumps and that kind of thing. We're just looking to basically uh, smooth it out more than it was before but still keep her skin looking like skin. If we want to come in with something like portraiture or my action called flawless face and smooth it out later that's definitely an option for us too. So again I'm still working at 10 percent opacity which you know is super duper low but it's going to give me a much cleaner more believable kind of transition. So once we have that kind of in there and cleaned up a little bit, I might kind of go into this darker spot down here. Sample, I'm going to hit the 2 key on my keyboard to change my opacity up here to 20%. And I'm going to sample down here and drop it up above. So I'm sampling from some darker skin, dropping it up on this lighter skin where it got a little bit too bright for my taste. It's another way to kind of blend it in, blend the light, blend the dark, blend the shadows. So a lot of that blending can be done just in how we go about clone stamping. And if I do something like that and I accidentally stamp some of her pants up onto her tummy, which I've done many times as we've been talking through the video, I will just command or control Z and undo that step. So right now we've gone from this step here and this look here with her belly and all of those um, stretch marks and spots to the patch tool to kind of get out a lot of those major spots leaving a lot of um, discoloration and just kind of just not very blended looking skin up in her tummy area to the clone stamp tool which definitely came in and smoothed it out. Now again, like I said, if you need to come in and add more shadow, we can simply come up and add a curves adjustment layer. I could click up here in my adjustments for curves or down on this half circle here 
and we're going to pick a curve adjustment. And with the curves, I'm just simply going to take the center line, pull it down to the lower right hand corner until I start to darken up the picture quite a bit. And I don't want this darkening effect everywhere. So what we're going to do is just invert this layer mask. The layer mask is selected right here, this little white rectangular box. To invert, we're going to hit Command or Control I, I to invert. And it turns from white to black, and black conceals, and now we need to reveal that darkening effect just where needed. So with a regular brush, I can come over to my toolbar and grab a regular brush. I need to have a white brush selected. I currently have a black brush selected so I can just hit these little arrow keys, switch them back and forth and have a white brush now. I've got a low opacity 20%. I like that number. I'm just going to go with that. And with my 20% opacity, very soft brush, you know, no hardness in the brush whatsoever, I'm just going to come in here and start to paint in a little bit of shadowing back into the picture. Her arm is still in shadow. It would make sense for the side of her belly to be in shadow and I'm even going to paint a little bit on this side to be honest just because it was so bright in comparison to the rest of her tummy. Um, so now that will kind of even that out just a little bit more. And you can see on my layer mask here over in the layers palette that everywhere that it's white, I've painted with the white brush, it's revealing this darkening effect here that I've done with the curves. And everywhere that it's black, it's concealing that darkening effect. If we want to look at that a little bit closer, I can alter option click on the actual layer mask itself and you can see with the brush exactly where I've painted and with the black areas is where it's protected from that darkening effect. So let's click this eyeball on and off so we can kind of see the shadowing effect that's happening here. And if I feel like I've gone too far, I could always switch my brush back to the other color, hitting the X key on the keyboard to do that. Now I've got a black brush selected. If I went too far, maybe over here in the top of her belly, we'll paint out some of that darkening effect. And don't forget, you can always take your opacity and just pull that down as well if you need to to decrease whatever you've painted on your layer mask or increase it. So a couple options there to kind of fine tune the layer mask painting that you do. So again, back to the beginning um, with just all the stretch marks and spots to the patch tool to kind of get out the major spots and um, lines in her belly, to the clone stamp tool to smooth things out, to the curves adjustment using the layer mask and uh, a white brush there to paint in a little bit of that shadow back into the picture. So now we can go forward with editing the picture, you know, turning it black and white, popping the blue color, um, you know, even running a softening action like flawless face or portraiture, whatever feels necessary to you for your particular maternity pictures, but we've got a nice clean skin to work with. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, stay tuned, there will be more to come. Uh, for more information about editing, editing with my hearty actions, please visit my blog, michellekamphotography.com slash photoblog. Uh, you can search for blueprints, learn how to effectively use the hearty actions, and don't forget to uh, link over to Facebook and become a fan to stay in the loop about discounts, specials, and promotions that are going on through Michelle Kim Photography. Thanks so much and have a blessed day.